Okay, so welcome to this next video in the Theory of Probability playlist. Uh, in this video, now that we've discussed uh, variance, standard deviation, and expected value, what we're going to do is discuss standardization of a random variable. So that's the topic for this video, standardization of a random variable. And the idea of standardization is basically uh, turning a random variable into uh, one which has uh, no, uh, well, it has a mean zero and variance one is basic idea. So, um, it, so you want to convert your um, your abstract random variable basically into a standard version as it can be. And standard by standard we mean exactly that uh, it has expected value zero and uh, variance equal to one. Uh, so. If you have uh, some abstract probability space, and uh, to keep it concrete, uh, we can imagine having an abstract probability space, which is uh, you pick any old person on the planet. So the experiment is just picking a random person uh, on this planet. So you have seven billion people you could pick. They are all the outcomes of this experiment. So it's a nice finite probability space, which is always nice on the intuition. Uh, so uh, we then ascribe a random variable h which is uh, the height of um, the height, basically, of a person. So every person has a height, and it is a pon well, it's a positive real number, basically. So we map everyone onto the positive real numbers, and we'll just do it in meters, basically. So we'll just describe everyone their height in meters. Okay. Uh, so that is a random variable, basically, uh, because we will um, we will basically make this probability space structure here mimic the probability space structure here, because if we have, say, a height of, uh, let's say, 1.8 meters, well, there will be a lot, of, well, potentially there will be no one, but um, there potentially is a bunch, a whole bunch of people who are that height, and all of them will therefore be mapped onto this. So let's say uh, it's a million people that have all got that height, 1.8 meters, exactly. And um, those a million people uh, constitute an event because they are all in a set together and they are all going to be mapped onto 1.8. So since there are 7 billion people on the whole planet, uh, then the probability of getting an individual person, so because it's a finite probability space, we can stick everyone, uh, every single outcome in a set by itself and call that an event. So every single person is an event themselves because it's the event that that specific outcome has happens. Uh, and uh, that has a non-zero probability because it's a finite probability space. So assuming everyone has equal chance of being picked, then it's 1 over 7 billion, so 1 over 7 times 10 to the 9, which is the number of people in this probability space approximately. Okay, and we'll assume the population is exactly 7 billion. Okay, so um, therefore the probability of this event is just a million times 1 over 7 billion, uh, which is uh, 1 over 7,000, basically. So, the probability of 1.8 over in this probability space will be 1 over 7,000. That's what I mean by uh, let this probability space inherit the probability space structure from here. I take any event in here, take its inverse image in here, i.e. all of the outcomes in here which are mapped onto though that uh, set that set uh, over here, which is the event, and the probability will be the same as the uh, probability of its inverse image, basically, is what we mean. Okay, uh, so standardization of a random variable now. So this random variable has an average value and it has a variance. So it has an expected value uh, of h, and it has a variance slash standard deviation as well around the, uh, around the uh, mean. Okay, and this, the average value certainly is not zero. So what we would like to do is create a new random variable, which is a standardized one. So we might call it h bar, the standardized version. And basically, the way we're going to construct it is from your height. So what we're going to do is take your height, we're going to take your height, and we're going to subtract off the expected value of the height. So basically, I'm going to say how much bigger or smaller you are than the mean. And then I'm going to divide you by the standard deviation of the height as well. So I'm going to basically tell you how many standard deviations you are away from the expected value of the height is what this is overall going to do. And the overall mapping, which is going to go from here onto a, a probability space, is um, 
is uh, going to be the standardized random variable h bar. Okay, so it's going to map every person onto how many standard deviations they are away from the mean height. So if you're above the mean height, you will have a positive value. If you're below the mean height, you have a negative value. So this now has positive and negative values. Or you could have exactly zero, which is the case where you have um, your your height is actually the expected value of uh, it, it is the mean height. Okay, so that is uh, that is the way we construct this standardized random variable. And what I want to show you basically is that this standardized random variable has expected value equal to zero. So let's firstly prove that the expected value of this random variable is indeed equal to zero. Uh, so the expected value, we want to take the expected value of this function of h. So we want to take the expected value of h minus expected value of h over the standard deviation of h, okay? Right, well, just by linearity, the standard deviation of h is just a constant, so I'll pull that out and we'll get 1 over the standard deviation of h, and times the expected value of h minus the expected value of h. Right, well, think about intuitively what that is asking. That is saying, right, we ascribe to every person on the population, we ascribe them a height. There is some expected value of height, approximately 1.6 meters or whatever it is, um, which is the mean height uh, across the entire populate human population. We are now asking, I'm going to take every per uh, uh, for every person, I'm now going to take the height and subtract off the expected value. So I'm going to say how much, how different you are from uh, from the average value of height. And we're going to ask, what is the expected value for the difference between your height and the expected value of your height? Well, that is obviously zero, because you're going to have an equal number of people bigger. Well, you've got an equal probability of being bigger than the uh, average value, and you've got an equal probability of being less than the expected value. So remember exactly what how this was defined. It's almost like centers of mass, basically. Um, you're asking if you... It, it's similar to the concept of center of mass, where you're, um, you're basically, you position the center of mass so that all the mass is balanced. The amount of mass on one side is equal to the mass on the other side, and the mass of people uh, who are below the mean exactly cancel out the mass of the people above the mean, because that's how the mean is calculated. Okay, so officially, the um, symbolic way of seeing that is that this is, by linearity, it's the expected value of h minus the expected value of the expected value of h, but that's just a constant random variable. So basically, if you view expected value of h as being a random variable itself, all that a random variable is... Uh, all, all, all that is as a random variable is ascribe to every single person a constant, which is ascribe them all uh, the mean value of height. So you're all you're going to label every single person with just a number. What is the expected value of that random variable now? Well, what else could it possibly be other than that constant? So basically, we get the expected value of h minus the expected value of h, which is indeed zero. So we do get that this standardized random variable has a expected value equal to zero. Okay, so now the next thing I want to prove is that the variance of this standardized random variable, uh, which tells you how many standard deviations you are within the mean of uh, mean height, uh, is um, zero. Uh, sorry, is one. So we want to construct the, which also means that the standard deviation of it is one, since the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So let's construct. Let's ask what is the variance of h minus the expected value of h uh, divided by the standard deviation of h. Uh, well, firstly, what we know is uh, some properties of variance. So this is a good reminder of the properties of variance. So if we take the variance of uh, c times, so if we've got a constant like c, which in this case is 1 over the standard deviation, then how, uh, what's, what is this basically in terms of the variance of x? Well, uh, we know that this is going to be, uh, we know uh, by definition of the expected value that this is the, uh, sorry, the variance, that this is the expected value of the random variable cx squared minus the expected value of cx squ all squared. Right, so now, uh, expand this and we get c squared x squared, so we can pull that out here by linearity of the expected value, and we get c squared times the expected value of x squared, minus, in this case, we can pull this out and get c times the expected value of x, and that will give us minus c, e of x, c squared, sorry, e of x squared, basically. 
Okay, uh, so now basically we can pull out the c squared and we get the expected value of x squared, allow me to drop the brackets now, minus the expected value of x all squared. Okay, and uh, that is just equal to c squared times the variance of x. So that's one of the properties of the variance. So we can pull out standard deviation basically, and we'll get 1 over the standard deviation squared, which is just 1 over the variance of h, times uh, the variance of h minus the expected value of h. Okay. Well now, shifting a random variable by the expected value, uh, by a constant rather, does that change the variance basically? Uh, well, I want to convince you now that that does not change the um, change the um, the um, variance at all. And the reason is that if we go this one, it's better to use uh, the other definition of variance. So use the initial definition, which is that this is the expected value of uh, x plus c, which is this random variable in here, minus the expected value of x plus c, all squared, and then take the expected value of that. Okay, but then all we do is apply um, apply uh, the fact that apply linearity to the expected value of x plus c, and what we get is that this is. Let me get these brackets right. Uh, x plus c minus the expected value of x minus the expected value of c, but the expected value of c. Um, the expected value of c is just equal to c because again it's just the expected value of a constant so this c and this c cancel and we get that this is just equal to the expected value of x uh, minus the expected value of x squared and uh, that's just the definition of the variance there so basically adding a constant does not affect you so this here is just equal to the variance of h. So we get the variance of h over the variance of h, and that is just equal to 1. So basically, the reason we standardize random variables like that is so that we can create new random variables which have mean 0 and variance 1. And that's the process of standardization, and we are going to see this over and over and over again. Um, so we will see it in the case of the uh, normal distribution, the exponential distribution. Uh, we'll use it. Um, we'll use it uh, when we come to talk about covariance and correlation. Uh, so we will see this a lot.